on Sailing Catalpa. We have a glass out in the middle of the ocean, arrive in Indonesia and check in to Kupang. So Lee's back. We got all of the paperwork done that he needed to. We've just got to wait for customs to come aboard tomorrow morning um, and then clear out with the Harbour Master. So we're going to go across now and get fuel and also have a look around to get ashore and see what's over there. The kids actually haven't left the country um, since they were little, so they don't really remember anything other than Australia. So this is all that exciting for them. Are you excited? Yeah. What did your first impression of sailing into Indonesia? It smelt different. Now I'm ready to go over and have a beer and just relax, enjoy, relax. go it's and been enjoy it. A long journey to get over here. Yeah. So, and it's um, have a I good think time. I've earned a beer. So I'm gonna have a benteng. Had a beer for ages. Oh, it's been a whole, what, six days? <laughs> we went ashore with our empty jerry cans for the fuel, our rubbish, curious kids and hungry bellies ready to see Cooper. We walked around the city while our fuel was getting done. Our fuel cost a dollar ten Australian a litre, and that was bought to our tender. So Lee's gone over this morning to get um, the guy from customs to come out and check the boat. It's about seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's our second day here in Kupang. So after the guy comes and checks, gives us a clearance, we go pick up paperwork. I think this afternoon, and then we've got to check with the harbour master and give him 24 hours notice before leaving and then um, we're free to go. This was Azar from Customs that came aboard for our routine check when checking in. He did his official duties and then sat with us and had a chat. Showed us some places we should visit, visit while we're in Indonesia and shared where he was from. Azar, it was an absolute pleasure to have you aboard. The rest of the day was for restocking on our food. So off to the shopping center we went. Everyone beeps and like nearly runs into each other. The boys looking pretty cute, or they thought you were pretty cute. They were whistling at you. You got whistling at mummy. Oh, well, right. <laughs> no, that was the no. old man. Mum is a different sub. That mum is a different one. She actually got picked up at the shopping market. Mm. He wanted me to go home and live with him. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? That scared the crap out of me. <laughs> this guy comes up and goes, "Where are you from?" And mum goes to Australia and he goes, are you staying anywhere? Do you want to live with me? <laughs> so we're leaving Kupang this morning. We're just pulling up the anchor. We got clearance from the Harbour Master yesterday, so um, we're off. So this is where we launched or took the dinghy every day. And the guys up there, uh, Michael, yeah, the other guys, they're really helpful. They come down and help you take your tender up. Uh, we got our fuel from them and we use one of their drivers to drive us around. Just washing the Kupang waters from our anchor chain. The Kupang water. The Kupang. <laughs> We're washing it with Kupang water too. <laughs> the water doesn't look too bad right now, but it gets pretty gross. Is it high tide, honey, that it all goes brown? And there's... Yeah, it's actually the top of the tide, I think, goes dark. Yeah. There is a lot of rubbish everywhere. I've never seen so much rubbish in the water before. Yeah, it's... It's kind of sad, the amount of rubbish. We took our rubbish over to, uh, to the shore. Um, and the looks that we got were like, what do, what do you want us to do with it? Why, do you, why are you collecting all your rubbish, pretty much? So it's, it's a bit sad, um, but they don't know any difference. So you can't judge them and you have to respect that this is their country and it's how they live. 
But all in all, we had a uh, pretty good experience in Kupang. Everything was pretty um, easy to do and we didn't have any trouble, so pretty happy. But more happy and more excited to get out of here and head to, uh, to Rote or Nambrella so we can find some surf. Nambrella, our next destination, was about 65 nautical miles from Kupang. But today, our next stop would be 35 nautical miles away. Checking in process in uh, Kupang went pretty well. It was pretty easy. Obviously, some people have different experiences. Our experience was all around pretty good. So the seasons are changing. It's probably not ideal to be going where we're going. We're going south, so we're going to Roddy, and it is starting the start of the cyclone season. So. Obviously the cyclones form up here and head towards Australia sort of thing, but mostly up here you won't get the cyclones, but you will get big storms. So, but we just want to have a surf. It's been so long. Um, so they say it starts in December, so we're going to just try and go for a week or two yeah. and um, get out of there before December. Yeah. We've got our Iridium, so we'll just have the weather check daily. Yeah. But coming up the east coast of Australia and finding, you know, you could probably get a garbage bin on every island that's washed up on the shore. The right time here, you could probably hop, skip and jump across from one side to the other on all the rubbish. Yeah, so. we're, we're struggling with the garbage thing a little bit. Um, and we knew... We'd, we'd been to Indonesia before and we knew that, you know, there was rubbish everywhere, but seeing it all in the water in the ocean and, and everywhere on shore, it's, it's pretty hard to see. We're just coming in for an anchorage for the night and we're just up front keeping watch for reef. Apparently there's reef and the uh, charts aren't very good over here so we've just got to keep a visual. We don't have sun unfortunately so can't really see too much but just for peace of mind we're up here and it's a fishing local fishing boat with some happy guys on there coming over to check us out I think So we're just about at our anchorage for the night. Our first stop on Rote Island was this very protected anchorage at Carafobo Bay. So we're all anchored up. Do you remember the name of the anchorage, honey? We're on the Rote. Rote Island. And we're about, I think we came about 38, 38 nautical miles away from Kupang. Yeah. He's just checking out in the binoculars what's over there. <laughs> so that's a fairy terminal. It's so still and quiet. You can hear roosters. actually really beautiful. We spent the night here and headed off the next day to a small town called Ba'a, which was only 15 nautical miles away. So just watching this storm cell that's coming. Um, it looks like it's going out to sea, but we've reefed the main two reefs and um, see what happens. Watching it on the radar and it looks like it's going out to sea so we're just going to go really slow and hoping it passes. Heading here. Rotty. Rotty Island. 
land and what is this anchorage called? Or this town? I don't know. Ba ba. No, ba. -a. Ba a. Ba. -a. Bay. Ba'a ba was the biggest town on Rote Island and we were going ashore to check it out and hunt for some internet. a pretty little town that we enjoyed wandering around. People here were super friendly but spoke very little English. After a bit of a walk we came across a Telcom Cell shop. The friendly staff spoke no English but with help from our Google Translate app we were able to communicate that we were after some help with topping up our internet. Some funny conversations and a few selfies were had and you guys sure made our day. We picked up a few fresh vegetables from the markets. Everything was so fresh and yummy. These girls we were walking past were horrified when I asked if I could film them plucking the chickens. After they were running from the camera and laughing. It was funny what we thought is awesome and worth capturing is just the norm for some. After they fixed their hair and put down the chickens, they were happy to have a photo. Thanks Ba'a, we enjoyed our quick stay. So we're just leaving Ba Bay. And it's about 5.30 in the morning. Um, we're trying to get to, well, we will get to Numbrella today and we wanted to get there in plenty of time because it's a reef, uh, there's a reef around the anchorage so. So we will be there in about maybe three or four hours or five hours. How far is it? 30 nautical miles? So I was just up the front of the boat, watching out for, uh, watching to the reef. And then I felt the boat stop, leaves on. Let's go to fish. And just on our way to Nubrella. And we just came past some guys fishing on the reef. Oh, feels like this thing took a kilometre of line out. Oh. What is that? We're off Rodi Island. Everyone said that you can catch wahoo. This is massive. Let's see what it is. Oh, 
waves. Yeah, I see them. There's some little waves. Nice. We're so excited to see any kind of waves, clear water and sandy beaches. Until, are you kidding? So what just happened, Dada? Well, the motor's purging a little, surging a little bit. Got a funny feeling. Um, it's doing it when we're coming into a reef. <laughs> got a funny feeling. We've got fuel, uh, water in the fuel. Temperature's fine. Oil pressure's fine. Um, just like a hiccup in the fuel system. Very concerning that we're coming in through a surf break. Wouldn't be rubbish, it'll be water if anything. Water gets down and blocks the fuel from coming through. We're so, in 20 metres of water and the motor has just stopped. Uh, so I'm going to turn the key. So it's off. Yeah, turn it off. I've got a strange suspicion it's just water in the fuel, fingers crossed. Um, so I started our primary one. I'm thinking I might just put the anchor on sail out and head back that way, away from the waves. Um, we're right smack bang in the middle here, there's no reef. Um, Does it start if you do it? Um, I'm just draining it out to see what's going on first. See if there's any water in this. Um, I didn't eat any. So the fuel's fine, it doesn't look like there's any any water in there? Oh, no. The motor just stopped. It sounded like it was dirty fuel or water in the fuel. So I went straight to the fuel filter, drained out the um, water separator, not a drop of water in the fuel. So I went, oh, okay. I'd lifted up the engine cover and seen water in the bottom and thought, oh no, but that wasn't the case. It was only just a little bit of water in the bottom and it was enough to flick water up over to the electrical um, wires here, which are completely corroded out. Um, probably from last time we had water in the bilge too and just like, it's such old wiring in this boat. Also the wires were really wet or corroded on the um, solenoid there so I've brushed all that up I've just done a temporary little quick snip and join and got rid of this the wires pretty much just fell off the connection so fingers crossed should pop out of here and that should start hopefully please 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 if it doesn't I don't know what to do
sometimes they I do that. I've yelled at Sarah once. I forgot these. Oh, I'm pretty sure you've yelled through that. <laughs> no, actually, I don't think you have. It does cut out the yelling and it cuts the crazy arm emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you went the other way. So join us next time on Sailing Catalpa as we settle into island life and finally get to go surfing. Hi guys, so that was episode 63. And that was our last episode for 2017. Okay, so just a really big thank you to our patrons because without you guys, our journey isn't possible. So to have the support, it is amazing. So thank you again. So we've got some really exciting stuff coming up in 2018. We're currently in Indonesia and we are about to move into another part of Indonesia for the new year. A bit of our story about how we do what we do. So for everyone out there, like, that doesn't understand 100% with the support network that we have, it's Patron, and that is how we are able to do what we're doing. And without that, we wouldn't it wouldn't be possible to bring our journey um, to you guys. We sailed the east coast of Australia and left Australia in November 2017. For us to sail and continue to travel the world, we need your support. It's only the beginning and we're excited to share with all of you all our new adventures. It enables us to create awesome content for you guys to watch. Um, we love doing what we do and we hope that shows. And uh, yeah, we hope to continue on and it's because of your support we're able to. So thank you. Are you guys wondering how to become a patron? Well, it's really, really easy. The link below at the end of every episode is what you have to push on. I will bring you to our Patreon page. What doesn't seem like a lot for you means the world to us. And I'm going to say one more thing. <laughs> okay. 2017 has been such an epic experience for all of us. We are really excited what 2018 is going to bring. So thank you everybody for watching our videos. We love you and we just we can't thank you enough thank you see you in 2018 Bye. one two three action but, but, uh. guys we just we just wait for this little boat to pass us his engine's probably as loud as a race car to y'all